K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems. Well, perhaps there is a simple answer. Not an easy answer, but simple. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. Republicans and Democrats. All right, folks, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be. This is Finding Common Ground. It is Saturday, 8.04 in the morning on January 31st, 2015. I am joined today by a special co-host that will be joining me for the next few weeks. It is Bryce Robbins, host of Opinion Nation. He'll be filling in, taking the left chair for a while, thanks to Dave's work schedule. Morning, Bryce. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Um, If I was any better, it'd probably be illegal, but, you know, who knows? (laughs) Well, that's always good. All right, so we do have a lot going on today. I think at some point Dave may actually call in and hang out with us for just a little bit over the telephone. Uh, do have a lot on tap today, lots of things that have been going on in the news, few things that uh, Bryce and I both decided we kind of wanted to talk about. But since I know you've got a rather large following coming in on your show, I do know there's probably some people that tune into this one that may not have listened to yours yet. So why don't we spend the first few minutes kind of bringing everybody up to speed on who you are and what it is that you do on the show that you have and what your future plans are. All right. Um, so basically right now, uh, the show Opinion Nation, it's all about putting out information, putting out what's what's relevant in the news. And then I'm going to follow up by asking generally the question, well, what's your opinion? And then I ask uh, the listeners to tweet me or to basically ask questions, kind of start the spark of conversation. But um, uh, this week, uh, we're going to be talking about the space uh, space race, uh, the evolution of space in the United States, the space industry. And then for the main story, we're going to cover U.S. spending. Because many people think that spending in this country is out of control, but I have a different opinion, and I guess you'll, everyone will just have to wait and find out. Oh, so interesting. So you are not among the group that says we're spending way too much money. That'll be interesting to hear about later. Of course, we'll, we'll save that for your show because, you know, you did mention specifically you wanted to talk about it there. So I, I won't press you about any of that today. Um, no now, um, just so everybody's clear, why don't you give everybody a little bit of background? Maybe tell them where you're from, what it is you're currently doing, only because I, th- I think it is kind of important because okay. honestly now that I've gotten to know you a little bit more it, it, it honestly makes me ha- uh, kind of proud to know you honestly because you are of the younger generation and it's uh, pretty exciting to me to see you already wanting to be so involved in the political spectrum and everything else because a lot of folks in my age range look at your generation and just see um, an abyss so to speak so no, I, I understand <laughs> you see the whole Occupy Wall Street people and believe me I see them too as little lunatics but um, yeah, so, uh, I'm a, currently a junior in high school. I live in New Jersey, a small town, Leonia. Um, I got interested in politics when I was a bit younger and it always just kind of caught my eye because, you know, most kids cared about, you know, throwing the football or hitting the baseball. And I'll be honest, I, I like sports too. I'm a baseball guy, but I, I always knew that, you know, that wasn't going to affect me and the people around me, yeah, how far I could throw football. So I always cared about, you know, how much I could understand a certain topics in politics. Uh, climate change really became my big issue, um, but that kind of drew me even further and further. It, it, it's uh, it's addicting. I'm like a political junkie, I guess. 
Um, and I, I really started to like politics. And then uh, over my winter break, I really was just like, well, I'm not really doing much. So I started a news, news social media site on Facebook and Twitter, Opinion Nation News. And then that's where I met up with you. And then here we are today. And the rest is history, so they say. Yeah. So um, I know when we originally started talking, at some point you had planned on launching a YouTube news channel. Is that kind of still in the works, or are you mainly focusing on the radio show stuff right now? Or Well, when that was a plan, I never knew a radio show was coming. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of hit me out of left field. So, I mean, of course, uh, still a good focus is going to be on that YouTube channel, but um, since I'm very focused on the radio show, it's it's kind of pushing it back. I feel I feel like NASA basically. I, I promise one thing, but you know it'll come eventually. Oh well, no, I mean you know like you said, you had no idea, that, and honestly, neither did I. Um, the the biggest thing that kind of fell in your favor is, uh, and this actually irritates a lot of folks on the right because I get, I catch flack all the time because as everybody knows, I am a conservative, but the, the normal co-host for the show is not. Um, he's not quite as liberal as you are in some respects because he's actually not an Obama fan at all. Um, he was, he, he tried to be, he voted for him the first time. It just didn't work out very well. Um, but, you know, so I catch flack all the time because there are liberals that I allow to come on the air with me, and I actually uh, have uh, caught flack from quite a few conservatives, but one of the things that I have always said because believe me, I do personally believe that conservatism, when it's done right, when it's focused on where it matters, which is not the social issues, works every time that it's tried. But I also know that conservatism doesn't have every single one of the right answers. So what I've always tried to do and what I told everybody I was going to do when we launched this was try to bring every single political stripe to the table, let everybody hear every aspect of it, and then let them make their own decisions, which is a lot like what Fox News started out to do before they took their hard right turn. Extremely far right turn. Yeah, yeah, um, no, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And <laughs> in regard to what you said about, you know, conservatism seems to always work uh, when it's done right. I mean, my, my always issue with that and is, you know, I, I would understand why we need to be fiscally responsible in this nation, especially now. But to me, it never seems to work. It's like communism. It, it sounds beautiful. But then when it's actually put into action, I, I don't know. But I guess that's yet to come. Maybe we'll find somebody good in the future. Well, there is one person that I definitely know we won't be uh, finding, apparently, for those of you who might not have heard. Uh, Mitt Romney has decided to not run in 2016. We actually have a clip we'll be playing about that a little bit later. Um, I have to say I'm kind of on the fence about it. I voted for him last time, and honestly, I think at the time he was the better choice between who we have now and who could have been if he would have won. However, I was rather disappointed with some of his showings during the debates um, because there were several times that he could have pressed issues and he chose not to. He decided to try to take the higher road, which is admirable, but not when you're in the middle of an election cycle because... I mean you got to oh, be sorry. able to... Sorry, no, no I'm sorry. No, sorry. Go ahead. I, I mean, I know I did this on my last show. I talked about the Romney 3.0 and how it seemed... He was, like, gearing up. He was building up all this hype. You know, he was really trying to appeal to people like me. He was talking about climate change, um, income inequality, and then now we see this. I, I was actually very surprised. Well, honestly, I, I kind of wasn't, only because he's he's done this kind of stuff before. But, you know, we actually do have that clip that you played last week, so since you kind of led right into it, why don't we go ahead and cue that up and let everybody hear it just in case they didn't hear it on your show, and then we can talk about that and the announcement some more. Sure. But I do want to mention three principles that I think should form part of the foundation of what we take to the American people. First, we have to make the world safer. Second, we have to make sure and provide opportunity for all Americans, regardless of the neighborhood they live in. And finally, we have to lift, lift people out of poverty. Uh, that was Romney. <laughs> that was Mitt Romney. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't sound like him from 2012, does it? No, not at all. So honestly, I think that may have been part of the problem. I think with some of the stuff that he'd let leak out, I think he'd figured out that if he was going to try to run, he probably should have been running for the other team. I mean, Just yeah, saying. I mean, I guess so. I mean, but the first thing he said was make the world safer. And that's my probably biggest conservative view is definitely like the United States kind of being a global police force in a sense. 
But um, to everything else he said was pretty left leaning sounding. Had a left tone. Yeah, see, my biggest thing is I understand why we are the global police force, and I get that somebody has to do it, but I really wish somebody could invent a time machine and go club the guy over the head that first decided it was a good idea for us to do it, because I really wish we weren't involved in everybody else's business, but the biggest problem about that is now, since we have been for as long as we have been, if we pull back, nature abhors a vacuum, so somebody's going to step in. And under this administration, we've seen time and time again, as this administration tries to pull us back because they don't like the global police approach either, uh, folks like Russia and now ISIS and everybody else are stepping in to fill in the places that we're kind of leaving out in the cold. And I agree that, with That's you. just not a good idea. That's the one thing uh, I can definitely say I agree with you about is that when Obama took what was the nuclear missiles out of Poland, I believe. Um, now we see Russia encroaching ever further into Ukraine. So, you know, I don't know if those were such a deterrent, but I think that they were enough to keep them at bay. Now we see them moving ever so slightly forward towards us. See, the, the biggest problem I have with Putin is this guy is like, this guy's former old school KGB. Yeah, yeah, no, he's nuts. Well, he's yeah, out of his mind. Basically, I mean, you put it a lot less diplomatic, diplomatically than I was trying to, but yeah, basically the guy's nuts. I mean, he sees... Russia and the old Soviet Union is the way to go, and he's going to do what he can do to try to get back to his glory days, because you got to remember, he was coming up during some of Russia's biggest heyday moments, and he also lived through the collapse, and there's an entire group of people that are part of the new Russian Federation that want everything exactly the way it was before, and sadly, I think he is actually one of them, and that scares the crap out of me, just to be honest. I mean, I saw one report made me laugh for a good 10 minutes that he had Napoleonic complex because he's the shortest world leader currently, and he's the shortest Russian leader in, uh, I think, in recorded history. So, you know, maybe he's just trying to build up his ego. So wait, there's, uh, I must have missed that report. So just to make sure that I'm clear that somebody actually put out that he has a Napoleonic complex? Some Yeah, I, I, it was one of the, the Huffington Post or something like that wrote an article stating that it is possible, and I, I don't know if it was for certain, but that, that, um, that Putin could suffer from Napoleonic complex due to his short, his short stature. You know, that might actually explain a few things. Yeah. He rides shirtless on, you know, bears or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever they do in Russia. Yeah, the, the shirtless picks, those weren't necessary. I'm just saying he could. I, I could have went the rest of my life without seeing that because unfortunately yeah. I'm one of those type of folks that normally once I see something it literally cannot be unseen and uh, I really didn't like having that image burned into my retina yeah no <laughs> <laughs> alright so I guess we'll move on to the main point of the topic that we had just broached which is the fact that Romney has decided not to run and I do have a clip we're going to play about that and then we will keep on trucking um, Dave still hasn't called in if he doesn't call in he does have a clip that he wanted us to play today and kind of discuss I was going to try to save it for if he does call in so we'll wait a while longer Rick who do you think will actually take his spot because it seemed to me that he was a pretty good shot for the nomination for the Republican uh, Party I, well, I have to tell you, at this point, I think, a lot, because if you notice in the news, they were talking about a lot of Romney's advisor staff and everything else from his last run attempt were now being hired by Jeb Bush. That's true. Wah, right. wah, wah. And you know what? If I see Hillary Clinton in the White House over someone at like Elizabeth Warren, I will be very upset because... I. I don't understand why Elizabeth Warren keeps saying she won't run, and I pray that she will, because she is so, I think, in my eyes, my liberal eyes, perfect for the job, because she understands how to get the banks out of our politics. She understands the important issues. Um, and I think Hillary is a flip-flop, honestly. I think she's just a product of old-time Washington. Hey, we need I new faces. I have an idea for next week's show. Why don't you see if you can find me some clips that have Elizabeth Warren talking about exactly the kind of stuff that you're talking about. And we can actually talk about talk about it next week. Um, I can give you my opinion as to why I don't think she's running. Um, and that's because 
the Clintons have a very large, very old school political machine. And if you actually do some digging, lots of bodies have been left in the wake of said political machine. And I think Billy Boy has his eyes set on being the first ever first gentleman of the White House. And I don't think anything is going to stop him from getting there. God, I hope not. Um, well, as far as if the my side of the aisle doesn't put up somebody that's worth a damn, we're all screwed anyway. Because uh, at this point, um, Hillary will probably get the nod because of the fact that she's got name recognition. Um, she's one of the most prominent people in the Democratic Party right now. And again, said you know the biggest thing that makes you upset is that she she screams out about you know campaign finance reform. Meanwhile, do you see how big her super PACs are? <laughs> I mean, oh my God. Um, don't take this the wrong way because this is going to come across a little flippant, but it's one of the only times I'm going to get to say this to you. Welcome to politics, kid, because they all say one thing and they do another. doesn't matter which side of the aisle you're on. No, that's true. That's true. All right, so let's go ahead and play the clip about Romney basically abdicating and saying he's not going to run. The curious thing is if you listen to the worded choices that he uses, he kind of did leave himself an opening, but I don't know if he's going to take it. And honestly, I'm not sure even if he did that I could vote for him this time, only because I had lots of blood, sweat, and tears in the game the last time, and I was point blank told by some of his advisors that they weren't going to press the issue that was glaringly apparent after that second debate. So I just, I, I don't think I can back him anymore. But anyway, so here's the clip. After putting considerable thought into making another run for president, I've decided it's best to give other leaders in the party the opportunity to become our next nominee. The reaction of Republican voters across the country was both surprising and heartening. I know that early poll numbers move up and down a great deal during the campaign, but we would have no doubt started in a strong position. One poll out just today shows me gaining support and leading the next closest contender by nearly two to one, also leading in all of the four early states. So I'm convinced that we can win the nomination. But I fully realize it would have been a difficult test and a hard fight. I also believe with the message of making the world safer, providing opportunity for every American, regardless of the neighborhood they live in, and working to grip the, break the grip of poverty, I would have the best chance of beating the eventual Democrat nominee. But that's before the other contenders have had the opportunity to take their message to the voters. I believe that one of our next generation of Republican leaders, one who may not be as well known as I am today, one who has not yet taken their message across the country, one who's just getting started, may well emerge as being better able to defeat the Democrat nominee. In fact, I expect and hope that to be the case. I feel that it's critical that America elect a conservative leader to become our next president. You know that I wanted to be that president. But I do not want to make it more difficult for someone else to emerge who may have a better chance of becoming that president. You can't imagine how hard it is for Anna B to step aside, especially knowing of your support and the support of so many people across the country. But we, we believe it's for the best of the party and the nation. I've been asked, and will certainly be asked again, if there are any circumstances whatsoever that might develop that could change my mind. That seems unlikely. 